Hello, everyone. It's your pal Ken, along with Jason Shepard and Geeks Vana and Ryan LaTourette. And we've got city council meetings and sectional charts. You're going to want to stick around. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's start with you, Ryan. Tell us a little bit about why you're here to watch this city council meeting with us. Well, I'm Ryan Lauderette, and I take on uh, governments uh, who are trying to put ordinances in place to ban drones. We've done so a couple of times in Michigan, turning that over to Illinois. Sounds like we may have to do the same in Ohio. Okay, great. And Geeks Vana, Sean in the UK, he uh, probably knows more about our FAA than most of us here in this country. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, yeah, my name is Sean. I'm, I'm as, as many of you will know from TNL, I'm from Geeks Varna. Um, I'm a journalist here in the UK. As Ken says, I do know a lot about um, uh, drone regulation throughout the world. So I'm here just to add my opinion to the pot. Wonderful. And of course, the ever glowing, the all tan, the two <laughs> watched, Jason Shepard from RemotePilot101.com and M0A. He is here to uh, kind of hey. be the, the voice of reason. I guess, right? Well, always, always, always trying to be the voice of reason. And I brought sectional charts. I mean, who comes to a party without sectional charts? So I'm ready to go. I mean, that's like coming to a kegger without the keg. So let's begin this thing. What you're about to see is how, and this is a great example of what is going on in various places in the country, how a uh, municipality in Brook Park, Ohio, just kind of took it upon themselves to ban drones from their airspace without giving uh, any thought to federal regulations. So let's start this and see how this happens. This is how, when you hear these wacky laws like, oh, you're not allowed to film in the park after 8 p.m. and there's a sign that was made in Kinko's that you have to adhere to and you'll be arrested and blip, blop, blop. How does that happen? This is how it happens. Listen. An ordinance enacting chapter 527 of the Brook Park Codified Ordinance entitled Flying Model Aircraft Unmanned Aerial Vehicles, U, parentheses, UAV, and declaring emergency introduced by Councilman Troyer. Okay, <laughs> you're laughing. <laughs> what are you laughing for, Jason? It's, it's the parentheses, you know, unmanned aerial vehicles, parentheses, UAV. You can tell we're talking to a real expert here. Yeah, he, I think he just wants to sound like he knows what he's talking about. Councilman Troyer, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Council, uh, this is something I've coveted for a long time. It came across uh, in an email. Thank you, Madam uh, <laughs> Clerk. He did say coveted, didn't he? He said, he said yeah, coveted. coveted. This is something I've coveted for, a, like, this is going to be during his re-election campaign. I kept the drones out of the sky. <laughs> yeah, I, right. you know, he coveted. <laughs> this is for his re-election, I think. Yeah, we're going to clean up this town. A chicken in every pot, well, and we'll keep the drones out of the skies. Oh, my God. And um, I just think we've needed this for a long time. It's simple. It is uh, basically what uh, another city has, and it's not perfect because it mentions a water tower, but doesn't. Okay. Uh, they just want to be like this other city. Well, it, it sounds like yeah. copy-paste law, like, ooh, they did this, so yeah. let's just copy-paste, save the taxpayers' dollars, we'll yeah. just copy-paste their law and add it over here. Right, we want to be cool like uh, East Jabip down there. I don't mean anything. I have some ideas if you'd like to change that, but this just gets us a start to, uh, to uh, regulating drones. So, and I think that something's needed, especially because uh, uh, people can... Uh, do good things with them and they can do bad things with them too mm -hmm. so i think we need this regulation and uh, <laughs> that's it any questions for the good things ken yeah thank you go ahead yeah you gotta do it <laughs> thank I, you I don't want to take it from we gotta do it <laughs> i'm sorry i hope they see this i hope they see this they won't but um, you, you you feel like there is a drone pilot somewhere sat at home watching this going, oh, this is because of me. Because he, he was definitely hurt by a drone at some point. Oh, yeah. One oh, of these yeah. guys, one of these guys w had like, uh, you know, was out in the back, you know, with uh, their 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 niece, Emma Sue, with the nine piece. She's back there. Just a sunbathing, looking all good up there in Ohio. And here comes the drone. Oh, I know it's got a zoom lens. Run, Emma Sue, run. It's going to feel it. Check it on my Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. 
I digress. Let's continue. President Vecchio. Has, has there been any complaints uh, to date that we're aware of regarding drone usage or anything like that? Um, I've, I've had some myself, but no, not that, not that uh, it, that's come about, but it, the usage is being uh, ramped up. You see it's just been ramped up. There's been a lot. It's been ramped. It's been ramped. I saw one. It was ramped. We haven't had any, yeah. any official complaints, but I saw a drone. I didn't like it. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm sorry, this this might be a UK US differential here, but uh -huh. um, here local councillors kind of like um, work on behalf of their community and um, like to take up the causes that a lot of their community feel strongly about. They right. don't tend to pick ones that they've had no complaints about, but they've got a personal problem about. That's a wow. very, very good point. And uh, unfortunately, that happens more often than you think. Um, it's because, yeah, I mean, they should take up the issues. I don't see there's a lot of pitchforks in front of the uh, Brook yeah. Park City Hall going, oh, down with the drones. Oh, well, this is an issue that clearly we need to do something about. It's just yeah, how, how, how many complaints have you had? Well, none. So, so you're telling me zero constituents have come to you to say, I have had a problem with drones. It's poor and representation. This is now very poor representation, indeed. More and more of them, and and it's just uh, get it before it's a problem. As a councilman, I've seen two. Okay. Yeah, I, I I'm just inquiring. I, I don't see many many of them. I see people down in the metro parks flying them, but not at least not around my residential area in the city. Okay. I, I so, feel I feel kind of like we're talking about aliens. Like I've seen yeah, two. One yeah. went by my house once. You know, <laughs> it was two in the morning. It was like it just seems like we're talking about aliens. No one's seen a drone here. Yeah. Except this one guy who's seen two. Right, and it's not a problem. There's been no complaints yet. They got to nip it in the bud. Uh, Ryan, are you seeing a lot of this preemption stuff happening? Uh, unfortunately, yeah. That's it's exactly the way it happens. They're, they say, "Oh, wait a minute." We, we've got this uh, person down the street that is uh, flying them over my house at 350 feet or something. Right. Uh, that's got to be invading my privacy. In, in all okay. reality, it's probably that somebody in the neighboring town had a legitimate complaint. And then they're like, oh, that sounds terrible. We don't want that to happen to us. We better enact some drone rules. But um, this is not the way to go about it. Um, just before I continue this. Uh, maybe someone can speak to how would a town or a municipality like this create a non-drone area? They, they can just create either a, a no-fly zone. Can they apply through the FAA to get that? Or is that too Actually, hard? Yeah, they could. They could go to the FAA and say, we've got uh, specific reasons why no one should be able to fly here. And the FAA could then say yes or no and, and answer that question. Um, but in, in this case, I think what we're seeing is exactly how these things happen, is that these city councils go, hey, somebody else already has this. We don't have to pay a lawyer to look into this. We're just going to steal their verbiage and use the same thing. Yeah, and the sad thing yeah. is that they can do this, and then the local police will have to enforce it. And then wow. it's up to whoever violates to hire a lawyer and go to the expense and the time mm -hmm. to fight exactly. it, even though the law is on their side. That's yeah, indeed. And I, I, I think the other reason why you, you wouldn't find uh, this type of certainly the way it's been set up so far, going to the FAA and 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 in 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 similar form at the CAA here in the UK, is because those authorities would actually require evidence. So if you went to them and said, um, you know, I, I don't have any complaints, I don't have any evidence, I've seen a couple of drones then the FAA are going to say, sorry, that isn't enough to to, to start putting uh, uh, flight restriction zones in place, the same as they would here. So, Yeah. All right, let's continue with the shenanigans. Councilman Scott? Yeah, through the chair to Councilman Turek. Um, this is through the con total of Rook Park, correct? Yes. I mean, even if they go down, like, like it was mentioned, down by, say, by... Uh, any fields or anything like that. They can't fly. Basically, they can't fly these in, in Brook Park at all, correct? No. Well, the FAA tells you you pretty much can't fly them in Brook Park, but what? other than that, uh, there are sections of Brook Park the FAA is... Uh, right. It's out of that that, that radius. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just, just anywhere that you can, can fly them, you, and people are flying them everywhere. Um, 
but no, it doesn't. It, it's a thousand feet, and it's what? it's public place. <laughs> It's as it reads. I mean, I could read it. Mm. Okay, dude's I pulling. Would love a, I would love a thousand feet, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. he's pulling stuff out of his ass now. And that's what he's yeah. doing now. He's like, yeah, uh, yeah, FAA, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, okay, I don't know where they get a thousand feet, what that is even. Um, Jason, you've got, let's let's whip out those sectional charts. Yeah, can I give some perspective yeah. on everything before I get to... Um, before I get to that, some people, I mean, Sean brings the, the, the UK contingent and everything international. So where is Brook Park in relation to everything? Just so everybody can kind of see where we're talking about geographically. We are dead smack to the east of Cleveland. Uh -huh. Class Bravo, busy, busy airspace, right? So yeah. this is where Brook Park actually lives, just outside of Cleveland. If we look at this on the sectional chart, you can see, I mean, it's right in the surface to 8,000 feet. Uh, for this class Bravo. So it, it's right there. I mean, the FAA is doing a good job regulating that airspace anyways, but here's the cool part. Let's go look at the facility map and see if we get Lance approval. So over here is Cleveland Hopkins again. Uh -huh. You can actually see Brook Park listed here. And in Brook Park, the zeros are, obviously this is like over airport property. I have a 50 footer, a 50 footer. On the other side of whatever interstate this is, I think it says 73, I've got 400 footers on the other side of this within Brook Park. So despite being in the class Bravo airspace, because I'm out of the runway complex, the runways are running this direction, right? No, uh -huh. nothing's happening over here. They're letting drones pop up to 400 feet just on the other side of the interstate. So again, not the thousand feet that he said, wouldn't we all love a thousand feet? That'd be great. But yeah, but still you could hop in here and you could get Lance approval today if you wanted to. I, you know what's funny? I actually did that a few days ago, and I got approved to fly in, in Brook Park. I so there, love there's it. my authorization. So um, with, with, with the power of this, and with, and he'd have to explain sectional charts to these knuckleheads, but if this went to court, <laughs> I mean, you'd win. Clearly. Yeah, but it'd be expensive. I mean, Ryan knows the, yeah. <laughs> what that would take. Um, tell us about that, Ryan. Here's, here's the challenge. I don't think you'd win. At this point, really, um, and and the reason being is it doesn't sound like they are regulating airspace. They are using their land use authority to prohibit launch, land, and operate from. So that's where they, it really gets complicated. Like in right? a, like is in this, a state Ryan, park. Is this similar to like how the parks are doing it and such? Like I can take off outside of the park, fly over the park, but I can't right. physically use that as my control station. That's exactly what's happening with the national park system. Is yeah. So when you enter that boundary and you're inside their boundaries, then they are using their land use authority to make that restriction. Now they can't do that outside their boundary. So if you're standing outside of Brook Park and want to fly over, yeah, as soon as they're coming after you to say, hey, you can't fly here, one, they're going to be outside their jurisdiction literally physically right because you're outside of their boundaries right uh, but that moment that you step in or even land inside now they're looking at using their land use authority to, to capture you you know what wow. honestly listening to these people i don't think they even understand what they're doing i don't think they even understand that let's go a little bit further down the rabbit hole as they've just tiptoed over the line they're gonna go they're gonna go full bore over into uh, illegality in, into uh, here we go. It's not, I mean, it's around certain, uh, like our about 130th there at Homo where they, where they had to trick the, the, the electrical, all the electrical stuff. So they can't fly them around there or within a thousand feet of that, within a thousand feet of our pool, our outdoor water park, that kind of stuff. Um, so it, it's, it's the standard of uh, limitations on, on areas we don't want. But other than that, it's it's the FAA that rules rules over that. Uh huh. Has there been any discussion with the police department about this, about them no. enforcing it? No. Do you see foresee an issue with them trying to enforce it? What's that? Do you see an issue with them trying to enforce this? No. There's actually uh, if if it gets when it gets to be a problem, we can actually there's there's systems out there, and I talked to the guy. Well, it was way back at the OAI Institute. Uh, had to be two years ago. Uh, Maybe four years. Anyway, there's a guy out there, and there, there's we can purchase systems if it gets to be a real problem that they, they can track them. They can, if you see one, there's a setup where you can track where the operator is. So if it ever did get to be a problem with that, 
we could we could do that. Oh my God! Okay, hold on. There's a lot to unpack there. This guy is such a doofus. And we get yeah. systems. Uh, Ryan, you look like you were biting your tongue. Go ahead, man. <laughs> let it let it spill out. Go ahead. Well, yeah. So the systems he's explaining would be uh, aeroscope, right? Uh, to be able to look to identify that there's a drone in the air at some particular place. Um, yeah, that could te- definitely start tracking you. Um, here, at the here. same token, we've got remote ID coming in. That's what I was just uh, going to say. Have that ability to track you as well. Yes, that's what I was just going to say. Um, uh, Jason, uh, when is remote ID? Was it 2023, 24, 23? 2023, 2023, she's coming. Oh, okay, so here's my question. How will remote ID embolden these kinds wow. of uh, city councilmen? Because once they get that, then then everybody's the cops, right? It's a good insight. I mean, again, remote ID is your digital license plate. How many of you see when you pull in a parking garage now, they got the license plate scanners, the cars that drive around scan license plates for stolen cars, you know, unpaid uh, financing, all that sort of stuff. They're, they're, they can do that. Um, where could they take it for this malicious type of use? Um, it, it could be because all the regulation, or I'm sorry, the proposed rulemaking says right now is um, to local authorities and administers. Well, they could brook park. They say, well, that's that's us, right? We want to be able to to be able to type in Ken Heron's remote ID and oh, it's Ken Heron. He lives here and he, he drives a, a Mazda, you know, and know everything about him. Oh man. Well see well yes, but but also on on an enforcement side of things, because the current RID setup is is going to basically have the pilot position available to the public, of course. Um, then, of course, they're going to be able to have their police officers look up where That's people are flying from and that type of thing. It, also, on, on the aeroscope side of things and on that side of things, uh, the, the, local authorities like this should be careful when they are close to airports, just in case there's anybody that's watching, because you'll often find that, the, especially these days, the airports have already invested in that kind of um, equipment. Oh. Um, so you, you may actually find that you're doubling up, frankly, um, and also interfering with their equipment by launching others within the zones that they're all, already covering. These things can cover 20, 25-mile radiuses, these days um so and and most international airports especially one as busy as that um have them in place and i don't see a local municipality like brook park ohio affording one of these things i mean the most they're going to spend is kinko signs that they're going to put down by wherever the hell they don't want people to fly but remote id is going to create an army of karens (laughs) right I mean, that's exactly why we were all against it, right? Uh, okay, I, I dare not continue, but I will. And, there, and we could, and it's a lot cheaper if you join that program with other cities. But again, it's not, this is just legislation. This is a start, you know, to, to regulate them. Uh, and and if, there, if something comes in, I mean, the biggest thing is somebody putting a camera on one and go look in mm-hmm. some people's windows. You know, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. How many times, how many times have we heard this? I mean, it had to come up at some point, didn't it? We it we did. had to at some point have the looking through the window thing. Do you right. know what? If if any drone pilots out there that are flying to people's houses and looking through windows, you're wasted. You need to go get your 107 and go become a commercial pilot because with skills like that, if you can actually record what people are doing through their windows, there are so many employers out there right now. Oh, for well, you. You've I got mean, a gl- glittering oh, career ahead how, of you. How, did, does anybody live in a high rise? I mean, a few people do, but most people, if you don't look in somebody's window, you can walk up to the window or yeah. use a, a zoom lens or hell, use a phone, you know, just, you're not going to see this in your window. Oh, I'm filming your daughter. You know, why aren't people get and, and, and another thing, let me just say this. Okay. How important do you think you are that we spend uh, two grand on a drone and all we want to do is spy on you and your window? <laughs> <laughs> you, see, now, you see, now one of one of the serious issues that I have with this kind of thinking over privacy and looking through people's windows is is when you put out the wrong information like this, mm. you're actually allowing those that are using drones for criminality, that are using drones to break people's privacy, you're allowing them to blend in with everyone else that's angry about this. What reg- what good effective regulation in any zone, including drones, needs to do is separate legitimate users from nefarious users. And that, that's what it needs to do to help police to to to, yeah. to zero in on the people that want to do some genuine it, harm with drones, it, which there are an absolute minority of people out there that, that do want to do that. This kind of thing puts everyone in the in the same in, in, in the same gets everyone angry and then the criminals can hide. 
But and beyond yeah. that, the, placing a specific regulation to the device is a problem, right? So if we're going to say you can't commit a murder, then you don't say you can't commit a murder with a gun because then somebody else can go, oh, I'm going to use a knife instead. So when you when you limit it to a specific item, such as drones, you can't peer into somebody's uh, house with a drone, um, you've just limited yourself in terms of what you can do with that law. Now, now, rather, you already have criminal mischief or peeping Tom laws that are applicable to no matter what device you're using, whether it's a camera, binoculars, or a drone. Keep that existing law. Use that. Yeah. Don't expand into I, other specific areas. I've said this before. You cannot, and, and although they try, you cannot um, regulate common sense. You, you can't do mm. it. And you know why? You know why there's a picture of a stick figure on a soda machine? It, you know that picture? And he's like, no! Oh! That's, that's not for the millions of us with common sense. That's for the one dumbass that grabbed the sewing machine and pulled it over on himself. That's why that stick figure is there. It's for the rest of us that know better. Anyway, all right. Maybe we need um, stick figure labels on, on drones that are like, you know, a, a guy like looking in the window with like a big, with an X and I don't know. All right. Let's continue. <laughs> the right. kind of stuff we got to stop, you know, and just annoying people with them. Okay. No, that's all I got. Thanks. Okay. Any other members? Councilman Salvatore. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My question uh, would be through the chair to the law director. Madam law director, if the city of Brook Park ever engaged in the purchase of of a drone for, for whatever reason, for safety reasons, for um, monitoring a fire from the rooftop. Or, Here we go. And I know we've had some, you and I have had some dialogue about that helping finding a missing person an accident those kind of things what would what would, would that have an adverse effect on, on us doing it but yeah no now if we get a drone if, if we get a drone <laughs> we, we we want to be yes jason <laughs> finally finally somebody asking good questions yeah right? well right. it's different if we get a drone though right that's right good stuff yeah I, I just find it so ironic he's talking about peeping tom stuff and then finally someone speaks up about what about missing persons? What about our firefighters? What about our law enforcement? Finally, somebody, that guy should be should get reelected. Everybody else, can them. That's, that's, that's well, my well, vote right now. Maybe I paused it in the wrong spot. Let's continue. Passing this. <laughs> Through the chair to Councilman Salvatore, uh, you might want to look at amending your ordinance. I mean, there are certainly many reasons why the city might have a drone. The uh, city might decide it wants to have a, a drone for uh, building department inspections, for the fire department. There are a number of reasons why, uh, police department, a number of reasons why we might need one or want one. And at that time, if we do acquire one and council has passed this, we may need to look at it carefully and amend it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so we'll just change the laws to suit us as we see fit. Right, we'll, we'll amend them as we go for us right. and everybody else. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. And that's yeah. an interesting one. They're talking about the building department, right? So let's, as a city, we can buy a drone and we can fly it over somebody's backyard to see if they've, you know, put on a deck without it getting a permit. And right. so we're invading their privacy so that we can collect money from them. Right, like like wow. if you if you yeah. want to see if, you know, that hoarder in your neighborhood if they've cleaned up their yard. Yeah. Also, I mean, also, isn't the whole thing of um, we as the the governance are allowed surveillance, but you as the people aren't allowed to surveil us? Doesn't that start to get technically into the whole thing of a dictatorship? Oh man! Oh, oh yeah. Just technically, ever so technically, from the you know the definition of. Yeah. Well, if you say so, you've lived closer to dictators than us. Yep. <laughs> this been. has just happened in Eastern Europe where a a, um, a a a government, I won't mention which one, uh, officially said that there was only, I think it was two or three thousand people at a protest march against that government. Um, a, a An excellent group who used drones to expose uh, inaccuracies and lies actually used a drone to count the crowds and it turned out to be four percent of the entire population were actually on the streets to protest against it. And so of course the government then used Yielded. Um, so it, it, it's it's a dangerous road to go down when you decide who gets to surveil who. 
I, I think a lot of this just stems from these people being woefully misinformed or uninformed, yeah. I should say, about all of this. You know, to, to the drone community, to, to everyone watching this, and, and especially people that have the Part 107 who, who have gone to... Boom! Wait, you know, right up there. Remotepilot101.com. <laughs> Use Siren 18. People who have gone there... Uh, we're all well informed, but all these this drone stuff is still new. It's still new to most people, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's a sy systemic problem where got to get the word out. You know, I'm I'm in these FAA uh, drone safety roundtables, and um, it does. I hate to say this. Uh, on the stream, but I, it doesn't seem like they're getting much done in, in way of education. We're, there's talk about putting labels on drone boxes, but a lot of times they just leave all this warning stuff up to the manufacturers, which is. And then, and then go a step further, Ken, you're a kid on Christmas. You just got your first drone. What do you do? Right. You rip open the box, you throw the instructions over there, yeah. you figure out how to get the props on. Right. And the first question, how high can it go? How fast can it go? Yep. You're a 16 year old kid. Right, that's all you want to do. So, right. are kids going to stop and read read the label? Right, no, but they're uh, not. No, they're not. Tough. And that's why so many eyes get shot out with the BB guns. All right, there you go. Let's, let's read the let's, label. Let's get back in. Thank you, Councilman Orcutt. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I too, as a councilman, have actually had an issue with with uh, one incident um, with a drone, and it was used in the wrong way. That's for sure. Uh, unfortunately for the user, they ended up breaking it on somebody's property while they were spying on them, so Ooh. karma got them. The uh, Okay, karma got them. Was it a GoPro karma that crashed, or was it karma that got them? I couldn't tell. Was it Kelly Green? Was it Kelly Green is right? Yeah, I mean, karma? You, can just, you can just tell the whole vibe of them is like, nobody is nobody has known the joy of, of flying a, a drone and, and, no. and that that's what we need we need to send like uh go on amazon and and just buy a mini two and send it to them here's here's a gift from the drone community so that you can go out and uh, know the joy of flying but knowing them they would probably just throw it away ordinance here does does look pretty good um i like how in here it does have that it can <clears throat> it gives uh the mayor or the police chief can give permission okay, here we go. for things to be u utilized. So if we did have an issue, I think, with you know missing person or, or if we were using it to help fight a fire or something like that, I think it's right in here. So I, I like this piece. I think it could be very helpful um, with it. I've read the whole thing over and um, except for the water tower, you know, which is fine. Maybe somebody wants to build a water tower in the future. So, but besides that, it has the penalty in there, and uh, I think at least having a law for for this is going to be more helpful moving forward because that's only going to be more prevalent, I think, moving forward. So I have. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Councilman Troyer, and then Ken, I'd like I got to go. Offer. And, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Yeah, right. yeah, I got to offer this because. This is a constant theme in many of these, uh, you know, drone ordinances that comes up is that they want to be able to have an exception in place for whatever personal uses they uh, intend or even a city use. Right. And when they put these in, it's that good intention of, well, yeah, we might be able to use it for search and rescue, whatever. And, and somebody can give that permission. Mm -hmm. Here's the trouble with it. They never follow through with okay, here's the process for requesting that permission. Here's the forms that need to be filled out. Here's the, you know, we we have to keep this around for so long for the FOIA requests, right. et cetera. And we have no, you know, uh, decision tree as to what's going to be, yes, you can for this, no, you can't for this, or, you know, do you have this to be able to get that yes answer? Right. And that's a real problem. Yeah, there's a lot of regulatory dead ends when you start doing things this way and there's proper channels like we were talking about before um, as a town reach out to the FAA and ask them say this is what we want to do don't just do it you know what my friend Larry I saw a drone the other day okay no drones to hell with drones and they're talking about like thousand feet from the water tower or whatever 
can you imagine if these people were tasked with creating a sectional chart? What that would look like? It would, it would look like a what's that? What's that? That thing? That old toy? Where spirograph? That's what it looked like. Okay, you have to be over fifty for that one. Let's continue here. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the the this was just like I said. This was basically off of another city's. That's why water towers in there. Uh, didn't want to go through the hassle of changing it. it didn't want to go there. Did copy and paste, right, Jason? They don't even have a water tower, but boy, they've already regulated for it in the future. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just want to let leave it how it was. We could add city-owned property. We could own. Uh, gas stations so people are you know they don't go or you know go by a pump cause issue or something we we, we could do the metro parks which we probably don't want to do they're they're talking about um piecemealing out the airspace I, how, gas stations right well you know I those, mean, li those, uh, those lithium batteries flying by those fumes you know they're yeah, just known uh, to that's ignite a, and everything a great time I, I i just their, their logic makes no sense here N no sense at all we could do a park we, we could do uh Add in that spot bars and restaurants, their patios. So if somebody's trying to run a business, they got everybody on a patio, and somebody running a driving around, flying a drone in, harassing their their people. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why uh, these could get out of control. Okay, clearly this dude's had a drone watch him on his patio. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> I was just out there drinking my insure, and a drone came along <laughs> and was filming me, and I didn't appreciate it. Oh man! So what and you, and again, it does say in there, with 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 written consent of the mayor or the police chief. There's two areas where it talks about where the the mayor or the police chief can give permission to fly it. Okay, okay. This this is where it gets off the rails crazy. Okay, listen. They're talking about people coming in and asking the mayor. I almost want to call right now, which I could do. I could. Call. When do you get their number? And we'll call maybe at the end so of this. So I don't, I don't see where that's a problem. Um, again, that's 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 uh, that's in a, that's an inappropriate wrench. So I just think it's a good piece of legislation. I think we've needed it for a while, um, or we should have had it for a while. And it's uh, it's gonna when needed, it's gonna be coming really handy. So okay. that's it. All right, thank you, um, Councilman. It's a good piece to bring. Uh, Definitely bring forward. I'm a little surprised. Maybe, maybe the state, the county, hasn't brought it before, or a group of communities. Um, I mean, you would just stated there, same thing, sort of, kind of. It's maybe we're lucky somebody hasn't done something with a drone prior to this. We did have little incidents. None of them were good. Um, we're by an airport. Our homes are clustered together. I would say. I would say 70% of our homes are clustered together. Somebody could do, 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 do a lot with this with the right drone. Um, one of the things you know, <laughs> that I would suggest that maybe talk to somebody from the safety department, um, maybe one of the officers who's kind of maybe dealt with a problem like this before, and you know, some of them do some pretty good research on some things and such, and maybe one of them could uh, maybe lean us in a pretty good way how to go about this a little bit maybe it looks like they're actually reaching out they they know they're not experts they're they're reaching out for answers but they're reaching out to the wrong people you know it's like ah, this right. one officer might know something like no, other oh, non-experts yeah yeah go to the f a a you know what i mean these people boom right there there's your answer i think they're in the phone book if you guys still use phone book but uh i i just my face is getting red sean you look like you're about to pop uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Isn't it? And and the issue is, of course, this is actually an international problem because here in the UK, one of the hottest topics at the moment is local authorities closing their land to hobbyist drone flight in particular. Uh, so we've got we've got large um, um, uh, cities that the local authorities there are actually saying you cannot take off or land anywhere on on council land which is um which is a, a, a as i say th th exactly what they're discussing here is a hot topic for the uk as well have you found now it seems that the faa is copied by countries i know that australia um people will follow suit when the faa does something people will follow suit yes. but are other countries following uh numbnuts like these guys too like they mm. see the uh, city council in uh brook park Ohio did this. Maybe we can do that uh, in Worcestershire. 
England or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we 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 don't we don't have that issue per se. Um, it's 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 more actually we we have an awful lot happening over here about future flight at the moment and about monetizing the sub 400 uh, foot area. And I think a lot of the lo local authorities think the way to monetize that is to get rid of all the hobbyists, so then we can bring in the flying taxis and everything else, not realizing that those things are you know 20 30 40 years away basically yeah i'll be long dead by the time people are flying around in uh e-hangs uh yeah, Jason, probably because an e-hang hit you but yeah that's okay. that's it i was just sitting on my patio <laughs> and here comes this e-hang jason your thoughts <laughs> it, 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 i like how you left me in the middle of the joke <laughs> there you go. my thoughts on e-hang let me tell you no yeah. um no uh, listen they they don't own this airspace they do own their land and i i can understand the the point that ryan was making earlier but municipalities need to realize you don't own that airspace the moment you leave that ground it, it's not yours anymore to to regulate and have the authority to do such but to ryan's point the land is yours yeah, so how but you see, but you see we, we've also got an issue here, which which takes this whole debate another step further. We've just had a barrister. There's there's a there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a barrister that runs a YouTube channel here in the UK. Uh, so obviously r relatively well qualified in on the, in in the legal uh, sense. And the whole argument now is coming up with how can a local authority that is obviously there to serve those local people ban them from doing something which is there is no evidence that there is any kind of issue with basically so you then start to get to the thing of actually can you enforce especially here in the uk is again a really hot topic can you actually enforce a local ban from a local authority on council land when of course it's the people living locally using that that have the right to use that public land it seems like that's the crux of the argument and maybe ryan you can speak to that a little bit because you're actually going through some uh, real life practical tests of these kind of things. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, right now we are suing uh, Ottawa County. Uh, Ottawa County has decided that you can't fly within a 500 foot radius of a, uh, their uh, council offices, uh, their jail, um, the county courthouse. So imagine this, that you have a house that's right across the street and you want to have a picture for your uh, MLS listing. Um, you know, grabbing a drone and doing so is not going to be legal under that ordinance. And so we are, we are having to push back and fight against that. Not the same token, you know, we are at a point now where we don't have legal beyond visual line of sight without a waiver, but we're getting close. We are getting very mm -hmm. yeah. close. Uh and when that takes place, who cares where you're standing? I can be, you know, 10 miles out and I'm, over that property where you think you have land use authority and it doesn't matter because the jurisdiction is airspace. Is there going to be one landmark case that sets precedent or is it going to be just little people just chipping away here and there, uh, adding to the whole thing? How, how is it going to play out? And, and once remote ID gets here, will that cause things to settle down or will it stir things back up again? I think it's probably going to start things back up again, but. I do. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to stir things back up. And and just, you know, that first question is, is it going to be one landmark case or is it going to be multiples? And I can tell you right now, it's going to be multiples. So even where we won with uh, MCO, uh, MCDO versus Genesee County, we were able to make sure that Genesee County could not regulate drones. But then Ottawa County stood up and said, well, that doesn't apply to us because we aren't Genesee County. Right. So now we're having to chase them. And it you know, we'll get it to a court of appeals. And once we get it there, then we have precedent for the state. But that's right. just the state. So, now we got to turn it around to every other state in the nation. Right. So you can set wow. precedent, precedent for your state, but we need to set some national precedent. Yeah. It needs to go federal. Yeah. To yeah. Get, that, to get the federal case law in there. You know, Ryan, I have a question for you. Back to uh, many minutes ago when we were talking about like the national parks. I can take off outside the national park, fly over it, come back, land. Uh, and I understand that it's their land, uh, their, their land use rights uh, or land use authority. I'm sorry. Yep. How would that, if I live in Brook Park in these clustered homes, because I apparently live in clustered homes. Yeah. If I live in one of these clustered homes in Brook Park, I pay my taxes on my property. Can I fly out, launch from my own backyard? And yeah, and that's that's the big key here is they're saying, no, you can't. And they would actually have that authority to do so. And that's a real wow. challenge because what yep. they're doing is the same thing as saying you need to apply for a building permit to put a deck on your house. It's the exact same land use authority that would take place over you launching from your own property. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. And you imagine that and, and think that, how is that possible? And yet that's exactly how land use authority is written. Now, the, the same thing is, uh, you know, Ottawa County, if you're limited to 500 feet around the, uh, the courthouse, per se, and you go 700 feet away and launch, hey, no problem. I could go and be right next to your uh, window if you wanted to on the, the courthouse. And that's not an issue until you get to those other laws that we talked about, the you know, the peeping Tom laws, et cetera. Use those to get rid of the bad behavior, right? Don't put in these arbitrary things that really aren't restricting anything at all, right? Especially when we get to be on line of sight. Yeah, I mean, this, this, let me ask you, Sean, do you have HOAs in uh, the UK? Uh, we oh. we do yes yeah we 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 do have housing associations and and again we have a similar thing here and and I think it's a there is a perception that that people have that when you buy a property you know you th- that's it it's it's yours you could start mining for gold if you want to that type <laughs> of thing but 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 actually modern property transactions do include clauses that say you have to adhere to the local ordinance you have to adhere to the local land laws and planning laws etc and so if that is changed centrally it sweeps across the board but yeah we do have housing associations here i can't imagine living one of those places you know hey man i'm an artist this is my pinto that i mow around that's art that's a sculpture what are you talking about? Yeah. But like, you know, we, we, we actually have housing association rules here in the UK, which are things like you can't park vans. Uh, so tr- so commercial trucks or even like a Ford Transit type. I'm trying to do the UK US explanation yeah. there. Um, I, I, I once lived on a street where the, the tarmac area, so the main road was was red tarmac and you weren't allowed to park on the red. You're only allowed to park on the black bits, basically. So I, I actually used to have neighbors come and knock on my door because I would pull up very quickly to run in and grab some bits and pieces and pack a bag or whatever. So I'll be out there 15 minutes outside the house that I have, that I have paid a lot of money for, but because I'm parked on the red bit, they're knocking on my door, asking me to move my car. Here, here, here's the problem. It's all these little authorities and groups of authorities, whether it be a town a municipality an HOA, a security guard who's in charge mm-hmm. of the airspace. Power, trip, power trips. Yeah. Yeah. He's in the security guards in charge of his parking lot down at the brewery or whatever. And uh, he says you can't fly here. Well, you can say that all day long, and it may be true, but I can go off your property and fly in. That's, you know, again, I was flying in Nashville. The, 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 the Capitol building is on State Park property. Right across the street is not State Park property. And I explained to a guy with a badge there um, that I can take off from there and fly in. And he actually knew. And this was about three years ago. He actually knew. Well, yeah, you can. Oh, you got me. Like, I wasn't going to tell you that, but I I just happened to know. And again, that's why that's important because you can power yourself, empower yourself with the knowledge that you get from remotepilot101.com and M0A. Right, Jason? That's right, sir. Thank you for that. I appreciate you. You bet. I'll send you an invoice. All right, <laughs> let's continue with this. There's something we didn't see, maybe there's something they see, or potential problems down the road. And today. So, but but overall, I think it's a pretty good piece. And um, yeah, you're, you're right, probably could use a little work, but to bring it forward now, very good. So, Council. Councilman Troyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I mean, I'm, I don't, there's no big rush to get this done. I oh. uh, wonder, Mayor, if, wonder if you could have the police chief come up to a meeting and and speak of it. <clears throat> police a chief? caucus? I think that would be best. Yeah, the next, the next. Yeah, the next regular such caucus, yeah. sure. The pre, pre-council caucus? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, no, the next, well, next caucus. Time. Next caucus. Next, next regular caucus? caucus? Yeah. Yes. That would be yeah. Yeah. Give them a little more time, Tom. Okay. Then, is uh, is, is someone being paid commission on the amount of times they say caucus? <laughs> I don't know, but... <laughs> Uh, I'd hate to see the minutes from this meeting, but uh, they're just so flippant and just so matter of fact about well things. Yeah, well, one one thing that disturbs me a little bit on this is that you know in in our in our drone community we've got a lot of people like Ryan, like Ken, like Jason who know their stuff and who 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 really do the research. How is it possible that a a group of uh, councillors, a group of leaders of of any size of population? can do such little research that the guy in the UK knows more about the rules that they're talking about than they do. They've got all this documentation in front of them. They could literally, they they could misspell 
drone experts and Jason Shepard would pop up on their computer and they can dial, hey, hey, M0A, we'd love you to come and consult and tell us. You now, you guys are the experts. So this is another way of saving on, on lawyers' fees and everything else like that. Call Jason, have Jason come in and talk to you about what you can and can't do, you know, a cons and, and have a professional consult. Well, and the and problem about bringing it, the chief of police up that, because he'll saying. be able to deal with enforcement. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they want that. It seems like they just don't want drones, but they don't want to go to the trouble of researching anything. You yeah. know, it's it's like it's like if you're a kid and you want a cookie, you just take the cookie and apologize later, right? Mom can't he take the cookie back. You, me you of got that. it, right? It's it's yeah. like um I what's that saying? I'd rather ask forgiveness than permission. Right? So, mm -hmm. you know, they they know I mean governmental entities like the FAA are so overstretched that uh something Very like true. this they could uh, enact this legislation and these rules, and they could be in effect for a good long time before anybody challenges them. But uh, this video is almost over. They're about to take a vote. So let's. let's Three schedule a caucus. Case report. Motion so made by Councilman Troyer, uh, seconded by Councilman Salvatore. Any discussion? So before you call the roll, what would the date on that caucus be? November 9th. November 9th? Okay, go ahead. We'll call, please. <coughs> Troyer? Yes. Salvatore? Yes. Mancini? Yes. Orcutt? Yes. Schmuck? Yes. Scott? Yes. Okay, thank you. We'll see. Ordinance 527. Shepherd. We'll be seeing that again <laughs> on November 9th with the police chief for discussion. Um, last, we have a resolution honoring Cheryl Chornick for being chosen 2012. Okay, all right. So, all right, all right. Well, the, the, uh, the yays have it. Drones suck. We don't want them in our town. Let's run them out of town. Wow. So, I don't know. This just... It's, this you know what? It's fascinating, Ken, the, the previous clip he was talking about. You know, there's really no rush on this, but they're they're sneaking over bars and they're looking in my windows, but there's no right. rush. No rush. Right. The, 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 the urgency. It, it, yeah. Initially, it's like, oh, it's like uh, there's roving gangs of drones yeah. around. Yeah. What, do you, what do you say? They're revving up or they're rallying up or something, but there's no rush. Yeah, it, it's almost. It, it, it honestly sounds, <laughs> to, his, to, to his defense, to the chap's defense who's been putting this forward, it honestly sounds like he's had a counter drone services company bend his ear at a conference a few years ago and that has that has scarred him he's then seen wow. a drone within i don't know the drone was probably taking real estate photos of his neighbor's property and he's then thought oh my god that drone's that 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 drone is looking at sarah lou is it you call it um, oh yeah with, with her, with her Emma Sue. Emma Sue. oh Emma Sue. Go, Emma she's Sue. so hot we got to get them pictures developed anyway uh, so so it, it sounds like he's had misinformation. He's had bad information. But again, you could fall over the keyboard and still come up with experts in, 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 in US airspace and, and FAA, et cetera. You don't even have to go to the FAA themselves, even though, of course, they would. I'm sure they would welcome um, local local law officials coming and, and talking to them. It, it's ridiculous. It, it really is. And it kind of it's kind of them shooting themselves in the foot because I've never been to Brook Park, Ohio. Oh, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm going to go. Yes. But, uh, I'm thinking on the ninth for the caucus we go, Ken. Yeah, oh, you know what a big caucus fan I am. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it seems like they're shooting themselves <laughs> in, the, in the foot because if it's a beautiful place, maybe people go there for the leaves changing or for whatever, like the, the, the biggest slice of cheese or whatever the hell they do up there, you know, they're going to have people, tourists up there with cameras, flying cameras, and they're going to be very disappointed and that could affect their economy. But uh, this video has gone on quite a bit. So let's wrap things up now by going down. Let's start with you, Ryan, as the train. You can hear my train coming in. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit around the damn train. Ryan, let's start with you about uh, realistic things that we as the drone community can do to uh, help foster change. Yeah, so, well, one, my final thoughts on this would be um, especially with the ordinance that they're looking at, they're looking at banning within a thousand feet of things like uh, cell towers and electrical substations. Um, this is, you know, bread and butter for many Part 107 pilots who do inspections. So if you're a Part 107 pilot who participates in those kinds of things, I, you know, get on the horn, get an email uh, generated to the city council and say, hey, here's why you can't put this in place. This is an effect on my personal uh, income, and, and this right. is an effect 
on the businesses that do uh, provide those types of services. Um, might it, otherwise, you know, might yeah. it be uh, something a little bit kinder and gentler? Uh, to go approach your local town or council or whatever and say, look, I know a little bit about this stuff. If you have any questions, just ask me. I'm in the business. I do this for a living to, to anybody who does or, or a hobbyist that just happens to know a little bit more to offer themselves as a, a, a point of information that some council people and municipalities so are desperately uh, lacking, Right. Absolutely. That's exactly one of the first things I did back in what, 2012, 2013, yep. is I went to the city council and said, hey, if you've got any questions about these things, let me know. And they looked at that thing going, we don't even know what that is. So, yeah, we're going to definitely come to you. Yeah, yeah. Be an ambassador, I say. Be an ambassador. Yeah. Sean, your 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 final thoughts. Yeah, I, I, I would actually hark back to one of the the cases that uh, Ryan was actually involved in previously, Jason Harrison. He he went from the individual in cuffs for flying his apartment of seven pilot for flying his his, his uh, drone legally in a park to actually becoming an ambassador. And actually, he he now does talk to that to to, to that local uh, municipality about drone use and about how to do things effectively. So he is a prime example of exactly how you should do it. Don't become an, in my opinion, personal opinion, don't become an extremist. This is about oh these people are trying to tear our hobby down Let, let's be moderates in the middle let's bring them to the middle let's not try and drag them across a, a line that they're never going to get across let's do like jason did in, in in michigan and bring them into the center and realize all the good that drones can do and all of the fantastic futures that's there also talk about economy which which ryan did touch on stress to these people just how much money local authorities can make out of drones in the next 15 20 years yes Yes, I mean, it's just like any technology that comes along, people are going to be scared of. I'm sure when the toaster was invented, there were some people going, you know what? I don't like to invent the toaster. You put the thing in, I don't get it. You plug it in, I don't know. I like holding my bread over the fire like a normal person. I'm not going to go anywhere near those toasters. I don't know why I'm playing the hillbilly music, but you know what I'm saying. But uh, uh, Jason, uh, your final thoughts on this whole thing. Well, I just want all the viewers to know that before we started recording, Ken huddles all together and said, hey, guys, this will be a quick 10-minute video. I hope you all <laughs> enjoyed this 35-minute <laughs> video. Because I don't know how you're going to edit this down to 10 minutes, Ken. I, totally I just don't. don't know how that's possible. I might just upload it as is. It's all gold. <laughs> it's all gold. But anyways, <laughs> um, you know, on a serious note, though, Ken, you have such a great reach. I know for a fact this video is going to go on to get thousands of views. I kind of want to take my, my closing remarks and put it back on Ryan and say, Ryan, what can all of us on this call do? What can all the viewers do? I mean, like you said, let's like like Sean said, let's stay in the center. Let's not send extremist mail to all these people. But what is the right thing to do to maybe educate and take this leverage that, that Ken's provided all of us to help fellow Part 107 pilots and hobbyists in the Brook Park zip code? Yeah, get the word out to everybody. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and, and if I'm doing it, uh, one, I'm I'm definitely going to be sending them an email to say, hey, uh, you know, contact me. Uh, you're welcome. Here's my personal cell. Let's talk through what you can and can't do. Uh, but one of the big things I'm going to do is I'm going to say, here is a list of your FISDOs that, you know, call these people. These are the folks that you can consult with that give you the airspace. They're going to walk you through the technical, uh, you know, charts to say, this is where drones can operate. This is where they can't operate without uh, special permissions and and kind of ease their fears as to, you know, what the airspace entails in terms of whether there's other aircraft in the area. Um, I think the other challenge is going to be is trying to get them in touch with the state police departments, right? It's not just their local police looking at, um, you know, hey, we've got potentials of MSU being spotted, at, but we have the, the idea that, hey, these, these mischief, uh, mischievous uh, actions of spying on somebody already have laws in place and they can be utilized. Here's how your police department would utilize them without having to go the extremes of creating a new ordinance. Right. I, I think just basic things are, are lost on them. Like, I bet none of them actually realize that uh, drones are considered aircraft by the FAA just like any other aircraft you know things like that because 
as far as they know, they've seen drones in Walmart, little toys, and they think they're toys, and they think they're just a bunch of 14-year-olds out to, to do ne'er-do-wells uh, to, to do these things. But, uh, yeah, everybody, thank you so much. I, I don't want this to be uh, an hour-long video, but hopefully everybody can take away something like this. Become an ambassador to your local community and offer that knowledge that you have. Don't keep it just to yourself. Also, I would like to thank Jason Shepard, especially for wearing a shirt that so exactly matches his background. It, it's been looking like you're just a, a head floating on a couple of right. finely toned arms there. <laughs> I, can do, I can do what I can. Just, just, I got you, my friend. I know. I, it. But, I apologize. But yet, but yet somehow he's still the best looking. Somehow. I don't know how that is. But damn, son. Look at you. You've been working out. You've been working out, haven't you? I'm, right. I, I, I'm just waiting for when you're going to come visit me in Florida, Ken. I'm going to, man. I'm going to. i got to get that damn car back. But uh, anyway, here you go. RemotePilot101.com. Use Heron18. Get get some knowledge. And uh, I guess that's it from, um, from Brook Park, Ohio. Thanks, everybody. Buh. And bye. And bye. Yeah.